something that you're interested in, but because of their passion and because of their philosophy or whatever, they've affected you in some way. And then on the other side, there's this concept of regurgitation, right? In high school, what do you do? You study, study, study. What do they tell you? A is A, B is B, C is C. Once you learn that, you take a test. Okay, once you pass the test, you can move on to the next level, right? In college, it's kind of more of the same, where you're studying something and you're regurgitating it and you pass a test and that mean, that's supposed to mean that you're an expert in the field or that's supposed to mean that you're, you know, you're very well qualified, which may not be the case. And so I think school would be beneficial if it inspired thought, if it inspires thought, um, if it inspires passion in some way, if it inspires you to think uh, and look at things differently, not actually getting the skills you need to apply to s real world situations where it's not gonna be A, A, B, B, C, C. You're gonna have to figure, figure something out or solve a, pu a puzzle in order to make this thing work, so yeah. Okay, um, and my answer is, and I've said this a lot, I believe school is definitely <laughs> overrated because not that it's not valuable, but it's oversold. They try to get everyone to go to college or university after uh, they finish high school. They try to make it seem as though it's for everyone, and they make it seem as though this is the only way that you're going to be able to be successful in life is that you have to get higher uh, learning through go into college, university, or whatever. So in that vein, I think it's overrated because it's oversold. And um, I think it's become, well, especially in the United States, it's just become a business, a big business. They make money because the, the tuition for these schools is ridiculous. They get people in student loans, and then they get them in this debt that they could never get out of because the jobs they get after they finish school, they don't make enough to make up for that loan that they incurred when, uh, to go to school. So in that vein, I think it's overrated. Um, now, when people, you know, we live in an era where people are so sensitive and they hear these trigger words, they start to uh, get emotional, right? So they'll hear you say school is overrated and they think you say, oh, well, education don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. but school and education are different. You go to school to try and get a particular education, but you are, you are being educated from the womb. From you are in the womb, you are learning things. You come out, you're learning. Education is learning things. And you can learn things in a variety of ways, not just by going to school. And I think life is the best teacher to me. Life and experience is the best teacher you can get. To be honest with you, if I have to go, if somebody, if one of y'all got to drive me somewhere, and y'all say, listen, I get an A on my driver's test. So on that paper, I, listen, 100%, but I never drive before. But this person, <laughs> didn't take that test, but he's been driving for two years. Guess who I going with? Mm. You understand? So I taking the person who's been driving for years. Now, not to say that it's not, like I said, it's not valuable, because certain things you most definitely have to go to a school after, you know, high school to get, if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, these things that have, you know, intense uh, yeah. studying and different words, and, yeah, different. that kind of stuff you go to school for or whatever, but they try to sell you, like, you go to school for every single thing, and it's, it's not the case, so I think it's overrated, and th those are the reasons why, especially if you don't know what you want to do, or you don't know what you're doing with it, you don't know what you're going to school for, let me ask a question, how much of y'all in UB now because y'all won't be there? Be honest, y'all parents in here. But the, we're not gonna. We're not gonna put you the see camera. That? You see <laughs> No hands went up. No hands went up. Now see, that that to me. Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. What using you, you your phone? Eh? You, oh, all right. That's where you was. I I asked how many of you are in UB because you want to be genuinely. You want to be the UB. Okay, and it remains no hands. So this is where the issue lies. Hold on. Let me. Do you want to go off to school, or you just don't want to be like college on the whole, or just UB? Ah. Okay. All right. That's all of you? All of you? Or you all just don't want, you all ain't in the college at all? Okay. Now, see, that, <laughs> what you showing me, boy? I don't know what this is. Uh, no, I just, I just had the, yeah, sorry, uh, for those that were on, that are on Facebook now, the first uh, video we had up, we tried to use the Wi-Fi in here, but it's terrible. So I had to switch it over to the hotspot, and that's, that's why that's gone. But anyhow, she said she wants to go to college, but just not UB, and you all just ain't in the college. Now, this is, my, this is where I have an issue. Yeah, we have my. Yeah, let's be, we don't have to do a session. You can just. I tried to go to SCAD and Savannah in Atlanta, Georgia, but when I got to go to the interview at the hotel and I, I took the interview, I got accepted, I got a scholarship. <laughs> Look at the tuition and fees. It's $55,000. Woo! Wow. 55000 Hold on, let me see the mic one second. It may have cut off. Because it was standby. Yeah, 55, so 55, 55 thousand. You know how much people don't make fifty-five thousand dollars a year? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You understand? <laughs> So they covered you for thirty six thousand, and you had to find the balance. Wow. They got thirty six a year each year. Just that, that's it. Total. So you only like one year. Oh damn. Wow. So. So it's not even a one time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's and that's the thing because like schools like brand name mm-hmm. schools like uh, SCAD, like they've been around for ages, so they could. I mean, it's a good school, What's Maya. It is a good school. Ah, huh? that's what, a one, what, two, which one. design? Uh, design. Yeah. What do you want to be exactly? Uh, mm-hmm. Graphic design. Bachelor's in graphic design and illustration and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, after I did that and got the interview. I just was like, well, I guess I have to start at UB and then make my way up. Yeah, okay. So what I was going to say is, right, I have an issue where people are forced to go to school when they clearly don't want to. Yeah. And that, was that my looks experience. like most of the, you, you as well? Yeah, and, and actually that was the reason why I basically dropped out after three years because I did not want to be there. Mm-hmm. My parents were forcing me to go because you have to get this education and you have to get this piece of paper and that, not discrediting that, but mm-hmm. I ended up just taking something for the sake of taking something. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something that I was interested in or passionate about. And at the end of the day, I just casually fell off. And especially that particular institution that y'all attend, it has a very special <laughs> way of touching your heart in I a very see the pain on their place. face. <laughs> so I, I reached that special point where I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a job. Right. So that was it for see, me. And yeah. that's, that's a big issue because, listen, and I, I tell people all the time, buddy, if my daughter comes to me and she clearly does not want to go to college, why are I going to waste my money? Sending her to college and she don't want to go. What sense that make? You mm-hmm. understand? So I ain't doing it. If she ain't want to go to college, fine. I, I, I go in with you. You are adult. Whatever you want to do with your life, that's up to you. I ain't trying to, you know, interfere with that. But I ain't forcing my child to go to school. And I think too many parents force their children to go to school, probably because that was their dream. They wanted to probably go to college. And, you know, people try to live through their children. Too mm-hmm. often these days. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't to their fault. I mean, when they wanted to go to college, it was a different time, too. Like, I mean, like, uh, like it was, college may have been like $5,000, and that was still a lot to them. But, like, now they still have that dream in their mind. And the, the, the parents, in most cases, sometimes, too, want you to go to college just as bad as you, you, you want to go to college for yourself. But you got to be realistic. Like, I think for me, I was, I was always interested in technology. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was bound to be like, okay, I'm going to college. I'm going to college. Um, and then I went. It was still a very expensive school. I got a few scholarships, but 2007, 2008 happened Mm -hmm. when we had the scrap of this money for me to go into college. So (laughs) that put a a huge strain on my family, but eventually we pushed through to, to, to make it work. You know what I mean? And I guess like with that education, thank God I am still interested in it because I can't imagine not being interested in that and then having that cost that my family incurred for me to go to that college. Mm-hmm. So I got to make the, mo- I mean, like, I want to make the most out of it. It isn't even like I got to, you know, so. The college degree is basically for your resume. It is what it is. So if you're trying to get a job in your profession or your chosen career, that is why you pursue the college degree. Does that work in the Bahamas? Because I know plenty of people with degree and they're still looking for jobs. It does not it doesn't. It does not They like that man on Kanye West for his album. It does in the sense that if you have 10 resumes on your desk, that's right. <laughs> you're pulling the ones that have the college degree on it. That it is what it is, right? But at the same token, if you are in a profession that may not necessarily call for certain certifications or qualifications, you may not need that degree. It's true. Is that it's too valid. That's no, valid. <laughs> I don't want that to be too bad to yeah, say. That's, but no, 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 that's I mean, but that's, that, but that's the thing. That's a reality for a lot of people. And I think Shanna kind of touched on this in her third post, mm-hmm. where it's like, let's say you have the lucky opportunity to go off and get a degree. Mm-hmm. When you come back home, depending on what you do with that degree, like, if you try to get into a job, you probably are going to be underpaid for what you do yeah, initially. That's what I was to at think least about until too. you get to a point where you get that experience and expertise. Because even out the gate, no matter what degree you get, you have to get that experience. If you ain't start, if you haven't 
been trying to get that experience while you in college. Mm -hmm. So you could start off low in general, but here is super low because of the market. <laughs> You yeah, know? they will you, pay you. You see that meme? You remember that meme with the with the vicious cycle? I can't get a job, job because, because I have no degree. experience. It, it, because I, I can't no get a job because I have job. no experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The vicious cycle. Um, so how do you expect me to get experience if you won't hire me? You understand? Right. But it's yeah. a game that requires more patience than you think it does. Um, and you have to build that experience. Now, it's up to you to be strategic how you get that experience. Like what Gail said, too. You have to... You have to supplement your education and your credentials with networking and selling yourself and positioning yourself in a ways where you can make it work. Mm -hmm. I know I was, I was just going to say that companies in the Bahamas will offer you $400 for your bachelor's degree, $400 a week. So if for you... For a bachelor's? Yeah. Whew. Boy, so, I'm glad I ain't you know, to Just to put it in perspective <laughs> for you, if you think about it, how much is that per month? <laughs> no, imagine buying gas, paying rent, buying food. What rent you could pay? Pa that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Buy, paying friends. rent, Where you living? buying food, <laughs> buying gas. You want to board a ski? You see what I mean? <laughs> and then I've also seen people who have been turned away from positions because they're overqualified due to the same degree. Hold on, what's that? What's that term? Overqualified. Now, isn't that a ridiculous term? <laughs> who here thinks that that makes any sense at all? How can you be overqualified? You could be overqualified. What they mean is you overqualified for this this paycheck. Right. Right. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike. If you can ask the question because I know you had a yeah. question. Um, I mean. So, overqualified. <laughs> Jesus. If they want you to flip burgers, right? But you coming in with a doctorate degree, they're not going to pay you the value of your degree. So they say right. you're overqualified to be flipping burgers. Right. You understand? Right. Yeah. Um, but I just talk from my experience. I, I, I grew up in the Kanye era, the college dropout. That was my mindset. My absolute mindset was I don't need college. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I, I already have a track record. My life is going to be easy. College, college, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Now, as I started to get older, and I realized that I needed funding for projects, mm -hmm. I realized, okay, I actually might need a job to fund certain projects that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Well, if I wanted to be paid at a certain price point, then I would need a degree to help me get that money, to help me start the business. Mm -hmm. So that was my avenue for going to college. Now, I had to work and pay for my college at the same time. So it wasn't so much of a, I took a forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 school loan and now I'm stuck with debt because I was working in the daytime and going to school in the nighttime. Now that's sacrifices you make. Mm -hmm. right. If you want the end result of your college time to be different because I'm 32 now, I have friends who still have large student debt that they can't even buy a house yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's all on how you approach it. Um, you know, don't put yourself in a situation. You have to start thinking long term. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what, what you want, where you want to be at 35, where you want to be at 40, you know, and sometimes depending on the, like SCAD, SCAD is a top of the line school, but reality is, is it's very expensive. And if you get that hundred and something thousand dollar loan to pay off your school, what are you going to do at the end of the day when you finish? Right. Nassau ain't exactly a market that could be hiring graphic designers and paying them six figures yeah that's another thing you know. okay great <laughs> just so you're aware as a graphic designer here you're not going to be paid for what you do go ahead Travis sorry notice how notice how he tell him to put the mic this mode right he got the mic on so I know, right? <laughs> I know. I apologize. like again I wouldn't even say it's, it's just hard it just will be hard like you have to be okay if you're going to do graphic design just know that reality but if that's something you like and you're passionate about you have to find ways to be smart and supplement that to even get an inkling of what you may be worth because it takes more to, like it takes more than that like i said so uh, to to be uh, going off to school in any event well bah bahamians have this uh outlook that if you spend enough time away and in, 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 uh, in anywhere whether it's work or school and then you come back it's, un it's unfortunate to say, but they look at that as like, oh, that's cool, you've been away for a while, right? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of use that's that to your advantage. That's that prestige. Yeah. 
But it's still a level of being networking, being personable, be all that stuff to get you in these positions because you could do all that, but if you have a shitty attitude, like no, and no one wants to work with you, uh, then you just screw yourself. And especially, you don't want to have a bad name for yourself in a small town like this where <laughs> word of mouth is ridiculous. So you could have a good education or do what you want to do and get in the right places, but if you kind of burn your bridges and have a horrible attitude, then that kind of puts you back from all the credentials that you built over time. For sure. Also with um, graphic design, that's the basic elements of that career. You don't need a college degree to um, succeed or function in. Um, everybody, well, Greg will be the first one to talk about Google, YouTube, yeah, I, and yeah, stuff Google like University, that. that's the college but I went to. There are people that Travis mm -hmm. hangs out with, for example, who can show you, they do amazing work, and they can show you basic things. They're always interested in training. So for you, yes, you do not have that 50 grand to go off to where you actually want to go, but in the interim, you can uh, work with people that Travis knows who would be willing and able to show you the ropes. You know what I mean? So you could actually, <laughs> you could actually produce work of high quality without having to go through that long process as well. You could get started on that right away. I want, I want to interact with them. You all, mind picking up the mic? I want to ask you all some. You all got any questions first? You all ain't got no questions? All right, but I got to ask you all some questions. You give it a mic right there. The first one who say no. <laughs> you right there. How did you get into UB? Why are you at UB right now? It was similar to his. I actually planned to go off. I got accepted into university and I actually got a scholarship. Okay. But wow. the scholarship wouldn't touch my bill. So it was like $40,000 over a period of four years. So that's only 10000 a year when my tuition is really 40000 Right. Yeah. a year. So that means my parents would have to find that other thirty, mm -hmm. And it's just my hard. parents being... Both of them they own their own business, but there, there was no way that that would happen. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a lot so of money. So UB was the next right. best. And what, what are you ultimately looking to do? Like, what were you going off to take up? Well, I was going to take biochem. Okay. I, st I started biochem here, but the program isn't mm -hmm. all that. So mm -hmm. I switched to nursing. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just... What made you switch to nursing? The program... The biochem program uh -huh. wasn't okay at the, the university. I no, wanted I mean, why, to. No, I why choose nursing over anything she else? Because of the program. Because she should be in here. She chose it here because the biochem yes. program was so bad. Mm -hmm. The nursing program is better than yeah. the biochem program. So she went. And into then the when you when program. you okay, graduate, like two different, completely different days. So, listen, I'm in the college. Give me a break, eh? Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> and then when you graduate from the nursing program, you automatically have a job. Yeah. Uh, see, so that's the reason. That's yeah. the reason, right? So, okay, that's what I was right. trying to get at. <laughs> yeah, I know it was something. There we go. Yeah, but the and that's uh, I mean that's a smart move that yes. you did, but it's unfortunate that the environment has to lead to that way. So like to take. But even but then, she's not going to get paid. But is yes. it is it is it she's smart because would you be fulfilled in that job that you would have gotten after you would would have completed nursing? Would you have felt fulfilled or happy? I mean, nursing was my first career choice. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But my parents really had a, they had a lot of say in what I wanted to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you, mm -hmm. you live with your parents, so that if daddy says, okay, I want you to be a doctor, then a doctor you shall be. Mm -hmm. So See, that parents, was, we got to stop that parents. That was the reason for um, starting biochem, but I wasn't really happy. I didn't like the program at all. I mean, I did nursing. I was a part of the nursing cadet program throughout high school, so... That was something I liked to do, mm -hmm. but when I started college, biochem was what daddy wanted, so mm. that's what I did. Oh, so right. you did, biochem wasn't really what you? No. Uh, so what do you, uh, that's what I'm asking. What nursing, you, you, I okay. want to do nursing. Okay, cool, mm. okay. great, all right. So it worked out, it yes. worked out. Yeah. Okay, great, next. Except she's not going to get paid. Yeah. You, how <laughs> did you, what was your journey to the great university of the Bahamas? Well, um... I went there because my dad. Again, boy, did yeah, you know? it wasn't yeah. by yeah. my choice. Yeah, and does he, he had this church? idea. Gail, so like you, they had the church. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, sorry. <laughs> you bring it up, right? He had this idea that oh he God, wanted God. me Just to be a moment. nurse, so I went into a nursing program. I didn't really like it. Um, I have an aunt now who's a nurse who just graduated, and I saw, like, the stress and whatever she went through. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't like, 
I wouldn't love this profession, so I'm not doing this. And one day I switched over to the art program because I always loved art in high school. And after he found out, he was pissed. Right. But I didn't care because awesome. I had to do something that I love. Exactly. It's your life. Right. And I didn't just take the, um, the art program. I took art education. Okay. Because I'm like, if I graduate, how is the money going to come? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to let the government pay me every mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was... Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Word. Next. <laughs> okay. Um, first, I wanted to do um, criminal justice. Okay. I wanted to be a police officer. Oh. But my, my parents... Were you a prefect in high school? No. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Greg. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was. I was. <laughs> she said, yeah, she was. I was. Oh, you were. See that? Yeah, but I transferred. So. But how, See? Wh how does that... Why oh, does I know that. that. Why does that That's a stereotype. That's a typical. <laughs> Come on. Anyhow, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I wanted to do criminal justice, but then my parents, like, they was like, yeah, that, don't make, that don't make no sense. And my mom is like, oh, it's so dangerous to be a police officer and all that stuff. So I just chose to do the art education program because I was always good in art, and it's something I enjoy doing and something I love. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, you ain't talking about give it get a mic to her right there, please. Yes. Alright. Okay, um art was something I always like to do. And um the reason why I went to UB is because I wanted to get like that first jump start because I felt like my high school work couldn't take me to like an art school. Mm -hmm. So I went to UB just to get that good experience, learn more, mm -hmm. and actually to know more people. Um Word. Um, in my freshman year so far, like, I made it my goal to know as many artists and go to as many galleries and know as much people as possible. Okay. So that's what I'm doing in my time here until I could find a way to go off. Mm -hmm. but Solid. That's, but that's a... Good plan. Again, that's how you make the most out of if you in traditional education or um, even less traditional. That's just a basic principle to have to get to know as much people as possible during your time and network as much as possible because when you graduate and then y'all go y'all separate ways it's like when you need to have that contact how you kind of make things happen to that um and yeah i mean like school has its downs but it's uh, but i feel like now with the pressure of because school is a business for most people and they realize too that they have to do the best they could for their students. So they're, they're getting smarter and trying to do different things. So that's why, you know, I think that's just why COB wanted to move to a UB status or like other schools trying to change in their traditional model. They realize they have to, they have to uh, answer to the students. So, uh, so what, you have some? <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta have hope, you gotta have hope. You gotta have hope, you gotta, you gotta have hope. I mean like from the, at least from what I've seen, from the visual arts, even before this event going on, at least they're dedicated to kind of exposing the students, which is a huge plus, like mm -hmm. for a university, because universities in general is really only about them, 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 or maybe a department. But like, I don't know, it was an artist that was a, uh, that had his own solo show like a month or two ago, mm -hmm. Matthew, and like just even seeing the visuals for that, like mm -hmm. to for a university to put a student on that platform is rare, especially if the school gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So you gotta take advantage of that. Again, you have to make the most out of what you get. Um, we see that a common theme is, like we said in the beginning, parents trying to guide their children into a path that they want for them as opposed to what their children want. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you guys you know, stepped out and said, listen, that's what you want me to do? No, this is what I want to do. And that's how you have to approach your life. You gotta understand, this is your life. You're responsible for you. You're responsible for your happiness. When you're miserable and they're happy, that's because you decide to do what they wanted you to do. And you have nobody to blame but yourself for that. And too many people allowing other people to dictate their path in life. You see a bunch of miserable people around because they ain't doing what they want to do. They're doing what they feel other people want them to do or just trying to please other people, mm -hmm. living for other people. And we need more people to start living for themselves and doing what they want to do and what they're passionate about. And, that's why, and I think that's why the service in this country sucks so much because you have 98% of the people ain't doing what they want to do. They hate being there. They don't want to be there. And so it reflects in their service. Mm -hmm. You understand? They go there, you go in these places, you can't find good service nowhere because nobody won't be there. Nobody doing what they want to do. And unfortunately, that's why everybody just around this town like zombies 
just go into it, well, I got I to gotta pay my bills, and they, they're paying me, so I got to show up to this job. And that's just how everybody going. And we need people to follow their passion more and do what they want to do. And like we've been saying, you don't necessarily need school for a lot of the things, especially a lot of things that people want to do. You don't need to go to school. Now, I'm not saying don't go. If you have the means, if you have the money, and you have a plan, you know what you want to do, and school is going to help you to get there and benefit you, by all means, go ahead. But don't go because somebody else wants you to go or because you want to be able to say, well, I have a bachelor's or I've been to this school or this university. Go for the right reasons. We have go a ahead. question from Facebook. Um, do you feel industry-specific certificates, that's banking or insurance, et cetera, hold more weight than degrees in the Bahamas? Uh, in the context of what weight, though? I mean, like... I have no idea. I just a country in nepotism, so I... So... <laughs> I, I really... If I'm assuming he's... At, they're asking that question in terms of hold more weight in the market. Yes, the majority of the market is banking or, or stuff like that. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're looking to just get a job in a particular thing that people are asking in demand for, then yes, they hold more weight. Now, if you are more entrepreneurial minded, it really doesn't matter at all. Even if you're in those jobs and you're looking to transition out, you may not even use that degree anymore. You may so use the experience that you got from that particular field or whatever and mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to tack on to what they said is like don't look at it in terms of schools and degrees like look at what industry you're trying to play in and find out what the real rules not the <laughs> not the rule uh, lear, learn what the real rules of the game is for that industry mm -hmm. if you got to talk to or network this particular person or you got to do these things look at the rules and play that game by the rules yes you might get a plus one or whatever if you have a degree mm -hmm. in this particular thing but it's you'll find over time, especially as you start building your name and your experience, that will start to matter less and less and less and less. It's like even like when we were, when we were in uh, high school, it was like, oh, I got to put my GPA on my resume. After you finish college, it's like, what the hell is your GPA on the resume? Like, it, it, it doesn't make sense after time. Yeah. So it's like but every industry have a different game. Every industry have a different game. Learn how to play the game by that industry. Really learn. Talk to the people who've been in it for a while uh -huh. and get their re and get their experience, like get what they've actually gone through, mm -hmm. and then craft that to what you need to do at that particular time. For I, what you need I, to I do. still mm -hmm. don't know why they ask for BGCSE for somebody's job. I'd be honest. It's crazy. You. Listen, if because I had to, if I had to get a job based on my BGCSE results, I would have still been unemployed. Yeah, but the average because my my results were terrible, terrible. I think the Tur average Bahamian doesn't have Tur access terrible. to tertiary education, so that's basically what everybody is supposed to have access to, the BGCSE exam. Now, hold on. Now, when you go in some of these places, right, you think these people had stellar BGCSE results? And no, they don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, that's what I'm saying. So, and it goes back to what Travis... that's the standard. That's it, the... It goes back to what Travis was saying, right? You have to understand the rules of the game, understand how things really operate, not how it's supposed to operate on paper and theory or none of that, because it don't. <laughs> Let's be honest, it don't. Mm -hmm. These companies are run by human beings, and human beings have certain tendencies. <laughs> and you have to learn how human beings operate and think. This is why I said this is a country of nepotism. I can hire my cousin or my brother or, or my, this, my little sweet, sweetheart on the side or this little thing I'm trying to talk to. Or this, that's how people... That's how, yeah, it's a, it, it is not a meritocracy. If you, did, if you thought it was, sorry to boys the bubble, this is not a meritocracy. But at the same so, token, too, if you're, doing the, if you're playing the game your way and you stay true to that, like, don't think about it. Like, it'll be hard, even though you may have a lot of industries that have that nepotism going on, it'll be hard to deny you if you really stay true to what you're doing or really good at what you're doing. You can't be denied. But that takes... Uh, just <laughs> having a degree ain't going to solve that. You've got to have that track record. You've got to have that experience. You've got to have that knowledge. People have to like you. And people have to yeah, like put you. It that way. People have to like you. That's Networking is so like important. You. You, have to, you have to build strong, meaningful relationships with people. That's how you get anywhere in any industry. Any industry. Not just these you know, typical accountant jobs or bank. Any industry. Whether you're entertainment, music, uh, any industry. Build strong relationships. Because relationships are key to success in life. Because like I say, human beings... We're just humans, and we tend to work with people or, or hire people or do things with people that we like. You know, I like being around this person. I get a good vibe from this person. I hang around this person. I want to be around this person more, so I'll give them certain opportunities. Or if I have something on the table, hey, listen, you available to do this? Because you build a relationship. So don't undervalue relationships. And that's why I think they oversell school and undervalue and undersell 
the relationships. I think relationships are more important, to be honest with you, and you could see that it's key, trust me. I had the opportunity to um, interview a government employee recently. Oh, really? How did that go? Excellently. He gave me three tips. Yeah. Three tips to um, to get promoted in government. Oh, what are they? Reach to work. Reach to work on time. And stay out of certain people's way. Once you figure out who the certain people are, stay out of their way. That's the three things, right? And they said that also they get promoted or the promotions are awarded based on your attendance. Oh, so really? You, yeah, so you come to work. Once you come to work, you are up for promotion. You ain't got to do nothing. Just show up. That's the standard that we're playing at. And oh then on goodness. the other side, we want to tell people, go and get a degree. Go <laughs> off to college. Go pay $50,000 and $40,000 a year. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. Learn the game, babe. You want to Whatever. Yeah, you what about this young game. lady? Yeah, we did that for about two. Oh, sorry, um, right, after Jojo, we can hear our story. In yeah. terms of the Don't government part of it, that's a whole nother discussion in itself in terms of self-motion within government agencies and how they people be working there for like 80 years with no experience, <laughs> no degrees, no nothing, but they just, they got in there through political means. But back to his topic on networking. You see, when Travis came home from college, he, he saw a void in our culture and he said listen we need to be working together to actually push it forward and that's why he started the organization shift the culture on saturdays we we, we 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 yeah man we see you gotta understand it it goes beyond degrees people who we were sitting at the table with every single saturday and we were exchanging information everybody was like-minded anytime someone had an idea or a project or a particular path they wanted to go on they consulted with this creative group because these are the persons they trust the most. Not the industry, but, but the people around them. Word. So Yo. um, I, I encourage you, you know, <laughs> as, as young uh, college students now, mm -hmm. you know, come out to one of the meetings, see what it's about. I mean, we have people from all walks of life there, from different, um, we have marine biologists and um, accountants. Accountants, finance, arts. I mean, we have Bakers. every 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 area, and, and and that's where you go and you get all the experience from because they have so much experience. You want to be around them and absorb all that knowledge. You understand? So that's my but, plug. But even like that, even under that, it was the majority of people was there. Same place that you y'all probably might be or get to is like we realize we have our own frustrations that. Things didn't go as we expected. And on, on top of everything, on top of networking and just collaborating with people, it was a community of people that we could be real with and realize, but I ain't going crazy by myself, Dredd. Like, you actually going through some shit and drama, too. Yeah. And I think that gave it as a basis of a, a community. That's, that's the basis of the community. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an ego thing. It wasn't, um, oh, we wanted to just be another organization. I just, well, when I put the Facebook event out, I was just like, okay, who, who's gonna come up that we could talk to about bullshit and all this stuff? And it kind of, I mean, and that's it kind of grew. It kind of. You put that in the subject and like the, uh, no, the I title? No, I'll put, I'll put that back. I'll put oh, it in the okay, asterisk. Okay. Um, Might have get more people. But it was, it, was, uh, it, was like a, it was a collective conscious about like, the, the reality is we are here right now, how to make this work. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the conversation just kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I say, um, Look at the different uh, values. All right, thank, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, look, look at it's not, it's not all about, and let me say this. We like to pigeonhole the education, right? People feel as though, okay, education is you go to school and learn these particular subjects, and that's education. But like I said, edu you start educating from you are in the womb. Learning is the education. And um, I always hated school. I don't know if you all got that vibe as yet, but I, I, wasn't <laughs> I hated school. Um, maybe because I'm just rebellious by nature, but I just couldn't stand the struggle. And it didn't make sense. And I say all the time, 90% of what they taught me in high school, I don't apply it to regular life. My, um, my fiance's little brother came home with some homework. He in the fourth grade, right? He brings some math homework home. I told him, do you remember the matrix at the end with that code? I, that's what that paper that looked like to me. I say, what the hell is this? And when is this going to actually come into play in actual life? So uh, they teach you a lot of things that you don't even encounter at all when you get out of school. 
and we just keep going on with the same old system, not updating it, not changing it, and I, that's a big problem for me because we're not preparing students for life. We're preparing them for examinations. So when you get a good grade, that just shows me that you know how to study, you know how to retain and regurgitate. You are good at that. That's all that says to me, and that is why people get a, a false judgments because they call some, okay, you get a D or F, or you dumb, you stupid, and they start judging people. But I can tell you right now, the C and D students, like me, got higher than A students because you could follow instructions. So I can go and start the business, create a business, and I can hire you to do what I need you to do, these mundane tasks. Because you're a good student, I can, okay, you can remember, you can write, okay, I hire you to do this. So don't discount the C and D students. Everyone to me, everyone to me is smart. Everyone is intelligent in their own right. Because I don't pigeonhole education to school. Because if somebody could teach you something, then you ain't smarter than them. And somebody could teach somebody, everybody could teach somebody something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? None of us know everything. We could learn from any, anybody. And so I, that's why I hate how the society just pigeonholes education into this whole school structure. If you have a certain degree, then you are educated. That's why I don't, anytime someone says uneducated, I have to stop them. No one is uneducated. That doesn't make sense. They may not have the education that you consider to be important, but they are educated in other ways. And so I hate when people use that term, uneducated. That is, that is ridiculous. And so that's my... Anytime, anytime you notice, anytime Greg, like, drop a mic, the, <laughs> the thing I'm, like, drop, that happened twice. I just want you to put that for the record. That just... and, and again, you, we, live, we live in the information era. Like, this is the best time to be alive in mankind. In human history, right now is the best time to be alive because you literally have all the information in your palm of your hand. People used to have to go to libraries, go look up books, and go do actual research to get information. You type in a Google search right there. Now, with that being said, it does take some skill. <laughs> to do what? To put the pieces together. Well, of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I don't say that to discount that. It's and just you like have to differentiate the BS from the right. actual You have access to a lot, a lot of things. The it's actual kind of like, factuals. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's for you and it's different for every person. How do you put that together to make something that you could apply to something else to make it work for you? That's the thing right now. I mean, that's the general thing. We all have access to millions of information and everybody has access to the same information, but you still got to put it together in your own context, in your own world, to really make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Final no, thoughts? No. Um, take advantage. There are some sites online. I don't, you probably already know about them, but edx.edu. I know what that is. edx.org is like edx uh, online org. courses you could take. Somebody mentioned oh, okay. it um, here. Um, there's Coursera. Right. There is Linda, L-Y-N-D-A. Uh, what else? Um, just if look you're into coding, code school, just shameless plug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the free information sites, right? You mm -hmm. could actually do certifi certificates, sorry, or you can start to look into the things that you're actually interested in and do those for free. They can help out a lot. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. So, um, we, we think we should get her. Yeah, let's get her. Yeah, let's get rid of mic. Get the mic. Put the mic right on the <laughs> side. You'll see it right there. Pick that mic up. Everybody else had to You go to UB too, right? She's waiting to duck in that. Yeah, she have a pin well, on. But you shouldn't sit in the front. She have like, a pin yes. on. Only people who go there wear that. If you go to a comedy show and sit in the front row, what you expect? Just a Take a rag on you, right? <laughs> so, we asked all of the other students, you know, why or how did they get into UB? Because the consensus was that most of them really ain't want to be there, to be honest. So we were just trying to find out how did you get there in the first place if you don't want to be there? So you and UB, right? Yes. How did you get to UB? What's your journey to UB? Okay. Good afternoon. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, like most, I didn't want to go to UB. Um, actually, I wanted to go abroad, and I got the scholarship to go abroad, wow, but Jared. it was a partial oh. scholarship. Again. And I had to find the rest of the money, which I didn't have. Mm -hmm. So my next bet was UB. Mm. That's how I ended up there. And I went in with the mindset that I am not going to like this place. I just want to do one semester and go. But obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> it's true when that they say, work. like, when you start and you, it's yeah. hard to come out. It's like and a vortex. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, oh my goodness, this is true. So <laughs> What's I, your major? Biochem. Uh, this is so a common trend. No, yeah. biochem is the easiest program to graduate from UB. Oh, so there's it a strategy is? to this. Yeah. Okay, oh, see? Okay. Okay. No, oh, wow. no, it's not. <laughs> I didn't know that. Biochem but, um, and management. Oh, 
Do you okay. want to do biochem? Or? Yes, that's, okay, that's right. my dream right there. I want to become a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Like everybody, like why you want to do this? Why you wanna? I don't. I don't take interest in any other major, but by med medicine, medical. That's me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So either way you put it, I think I have to be in college for the career that I want to okay. take. Oh, no, so. for sure. Yeah. For sure. But <laughs> I do agree with you when you say that not no one is uneducated and you don't need college to be successful in right. life. Like mm -hmm. Bill Gates, he didn't, he yeah, didn't even finish high school. Most of the people you who run the world now have yeah. either dropped out of college or never went. Yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you. you so, yeah, I That's understand. the thing about that too, which is, is, which is a narrative that they don't really say <laughs> until you really read the story, is that... The reason why like people like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or or, um, or Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg mm -hmm. became successful is because they knew they created something valuable right. and they kind of had people by the balls. Like it's like this is this is you know they you had that. Roll today. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, I mean that's what it was. It wasn't like okay, you could you didn't go to school or whatever like that. They, but they didn't have nothing. You know what I mean? They had something. They had yeah, an idea right. and they made it tangible. And they found avenues to kind of sell that idea and get the value from that. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody could do it depending on what that, va what that yeah. idea is and right. if they put those pieces together to make it work in the right way. But, I, but it'll be false to fully say that, oh, I don't need to go to college right. to right. be successful, yeah. but right. you still got to put in some work right. yeah. to make something work. That's true. Oh, for sure. You actually you have to work um, probably a bit harder. You know what I mean? Because at least in the, if you go to school, there's some kind of system or guidance that you have. But if you don't, you have to figure it out yourself. And so you may, there are room to make, you know, more mistakes or make more bumps. But then all that is part of the learning experience. You know what I mean? So it's all up to you. You have to decide what you want to do with your life first and then make that decision as far as school is concerned. Mm -hmm. If it makes sense, if you can afford it and you can see, you have a plan and you can see it working for you, by all means, go ahead. But if you only go in because mommy or daddy say, listen, yeah, you better go here because you ain't going to be sitting around. This house not doing nothing. You're going to school. <laughs> then I think you need to kind of consider something else and get some real world experience in a field that you're looking to go into. Mm -hmm. So that would be you know, my advice because like I said, I've been to Google University. I was never interested in going to college. I started a business and I had to learn on the go. Still learning on the go uh, as we yeah. speak. So it's, it's a constant, constant journey, constant education. Even though I ain't in school, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. So I'm still educating myself every chance I get. Um, and you don't have to be in school to get an education, especially in this day and age when everything is at your fingertips. So that's just, uh, that's, that's, I think that's the show for the day, Gail. Anything yeah, else we need to drop? That's no, it? that's it. Yeah, Very good. good. All right, so um, who was it? Giorgio was the only person who raised his hand who said he knew about the show. So now you guys know these are the kind of discussions we have <laughs> every week. We actually do it on Thursday at 4.30 on a regular but we did it for, you know, Keisha and this event. We moved it to Friday. <laughs> Special shout out to Keisha for yes, having shout us. Out, yes. Shout out to Keisha. Nassau. This was wonderful. Historic Nassau and the Kung Fu. Yeah. <laughs> what are you about to get into? I, I don't forget. Am hey I the only person smelling curry? Yes. Somebody cooking curry? Y'all have been cooking you. curry when y'all bring me this water. Hey, close out the show before you, you go worry Oh, about sorry, curry. okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so follow us on the entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Just search. It's entrepreneur, the number two entrepreneur on Facebook. Or if you just want to, uh, you could go to gounderthe-rug.com and we have, uh, everything is going to be on there. You can get to the Facebook page. Just like the Facebook page. Every Thursday at 4, 4 every Thursday at 4.30, like I can't even talk. This is, we do yeah. this show. So please follow us. Please watch the show. We are on episode 82, so you can go back and watch previous episodes, some stuff you may, that may relate to you, uh, stuff that may help you. So you can go back and watch those episodes. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for coming out. Give yourselves a round of applause for telling us your story as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And like I say, thank you so much again, Keisha. We appreciate it. And we're going to end this the way we end every show. And as you can see, we wear the lovely T-shirts. If you want to purchase, Gail has them on sale as well. I wear them vibe. And That's they a vibe. And they we'll say it and then I'll end it with the vibe. No, we ain't doing no vibe. Why? <laughs> you post up your shirt on too. But you ain't buying it yet. But anyhow, On so blast. we end the show with losers make excuses <laughs> and winners make adjustments. Why? Stop making excuses in life. When you walk around, you talk to people, they'll always tell you all kind of excuses they have as the why they ain't doing what they want to do or <laughs> where it, why they ain't where they want to be. People make excuses all the time. Your life is in your hands. It's up to you. Stop making excuses and make the necessary adjustments to get what you want to get or where you want to go. And that's our motto. That's what we live by on the show. Thank you again, and peace. Woo!
It's the after show. It's the after show. Oh, yes, yeah, the after, after show. show. <laughs> Greg. <laughs>